Yes, this is an incredibly exciting mission. So it is an all private mission, meaning meaning that there's no commercial astronaut that on board. They're all private citizens, including billionaire J, uh, Jared Isaacman. What this mission is aiming to do is actually go further than humans have been in space for quite some time. They'll be uh, launching to about 1,400 kilometers above the Earth. To put that into perspective, our astronauts aboard the ISS right now are about 400 kilometers above the Earth. So it's an incredibly risky and interesting. Uh, mission. And we also are set to see the first private spacewalk if everything goes to plan, uh, likely this Friday. Uh, who is funding the mission and how much will it cost? Do we know? So that is uh, with Jared Isaacman. So he is not new to space. He was part of the Inspiration4 mission in 2021. He co-funded that. Um, so he made his billions with a company called Shift4, which is a payments company. And he's always been very interested in space and has really taken that to the nth level. So this is a multi, multi-million dollar mission and only made possible uh, thanks to having that financial funding behind him. And who will be on board the first flight? So this particular flight has four astronauts. So Isaacman himself, it also has two SpaceX engineers as a uh, crew as well. So we've got uh, Sarah Gales and Anna Mallon who will be joining, which is quite incredible. Neither of them have been to space. Both of them have worked for SpaceX for multiple years. And then we also have a retired veteran from the US Air Force who is uh, a pal of Isaacman's, who brings a wealth, decades of experience as an F-16 fighter jet pilot uh, who will be pilot of this mission. So a, a wealth of different people and a wealth of different skills that they're bringing up there. I understand the spacewalk has been delayed, but you're saying it'll uh, it's expected to happen this Friday. Talk us through what we can expect to see. So if all goes to plan, the original timeline was about three to four days after launch. We're expecting launch to occur in the next 24 to 36 hours. If all goes to plan, once the capsule reaches that 1,400 kilometre mark, we should expect them to try and attempt that private spacewalk. So what that means is that they will be going outside of the capsule in a brand new spacesuit that was developed over the last couple of years by SpaceX uh, and doing uh, an extravehicular activity, so an EVA walk, um, which if they're able to to do that and if that is successful that is a huge milestone for SpaceX. What kind of activity will they do and can you tell us what are the goals and benefits of this mission? So this particular mission is multifold. So it's testing a few different things. On board, they have a, at least 40 different experiments that they are going to be doing on this mission. Um, it is also testing how humans will uh not behave, but how they will react to something called the Van Allen radiation belt. So where they are going in orbit is just at the tip of something we call the radiation belts of Earth. So this is where a lot of high energy particles from our sun are trapped thanks to our magnetic field. Now, we have had astronauts go through that belt in the past with the Apollo missions, but that was many, many decades ago. So this is testing a range of vital different experimentation and also the durability um, and the protectiveness of those suits. We look forward to, to seeing how it all goes. Meanwhile, NASA has announced two astronauts who flew with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft to the ISS in June will have to wait until next year to return home. Is this a big deal? That is correct. It, it is a slightly big deal. And I think what is so shocking, at least to the public, is that this original mission was pitched for eight days. And I think that was almost a crucial factor that went wrong here, is that it was a very short mission from the get-go. And when any delays happen, that's when it sparks public curiosity and concern, rightly so. So what has happened is there's been some issues with the Boeing Starliner capsule once it has docked the ISS. And NASA has taken a good time to determine that they are not happy to bring the astronauts back directly on that capsule and they would prefer to wait and bring them back on a SpaceX uh, Crew-9 capsule. So it is really interesting and it's capturing the public's attention. Imagine going to work for eight days and you get stuck in space for eight months. I don't know how I'd feel about that. How much pressure does this put on Boeing's space unit, especially when it's been compared to Elon Musk's SpaceX? Mm. 
Yeah, look, it's it's a tough one because Boeing has been awarded um, a certain tender agreement with NASA, and that agreement itself is about four and a half billion dollars to manufacture, test, and trial this Starliner capsule over six different missions. Now, this is significantly behind and a delayed mission, uh, and it's so far used about half of that budget. So it's in the $2 billion range. It is putting a little bit of stress, especially with some of this publicity that is happening with the mission not going exactly as planned. But my hope is that it's a glass half full situation. Anything that they learn from this capsule and when they return it back to Earth is only going to strengthen that capsule design and prototyping and testing for the future. And we'll hopefully be able to use the Starliner um, in the future as a reliable uh capsule to get people and cargo to space and back. Well, tell us a bit more about what this all means for space tourism and the price tag for private individuals who dream <laughs> of travelling to space one day. Yeah. It is, it's no secret that space is becoming extremely commercial. And I think it's a good thing in the long run. We have multiple different companies who are providing access to space now uh, and multiple different companies who are providing slightly different types of access. And we've seen with the surge of SpaceX that it has become cheaper and and more available to send things to space um, pretty rapidly with their Falcon 9, which is that reusable rocket that is able to launch and then land again. It's it's essentially a game changer. And so it's really exciting, not just for uh, scientific missions, but for private missions, is that we're going to get a lot more going on in space, both with science, with satellites, and also with people being able to access space. Exciting times now and ahead. Dr. Sarah Webb, great to talk as always. Thank you. Thank you for having me.